Today I'm going to share with you some of my top tips for starting seeds. This is one of the few times a year where what I'm doing in the garden actually aligns really well with uh, what everyone else is doing in the Northern Hemisphere as well. Today I'm getting started a lot of my seeds that I'm going to be growing in the tunnel house for winter crops. This includes some brassicas and some lettuce, but ultimately seed starting is pretty much the same no matter what vegetable you're growing. The first thing you're going to need is some kind of container to grow your seed in. These here are some simply some reused pots that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace for free from someone that had obviously been buying a lot of vegetable seedlings and they had saved all their containers which I was super thankful for because they are perfect to reuse all I did was give them a good hose off and let them dry and then I just stacked them up and stored them away and these I have actually used for many years now and they mostly have survived really well and honestly I got them for free and if one or two of them break every now and again it doesn't matter too much unfortunately most of these are made with non-recyclable plastics so the more that we can use them over and over again the better the other thing i have here is a tray that i actually picked up from a nursery that was closing down these are really rigid really good quality unfortunately they're also really expensive to buy new and so they're definitely not what you need if you're a beginner gardener unless you can find some for free or for super cheap from somewhere the other thing i have started doing in the last year or two is is putting these black trays underneath all my seedlings and this means that I'm watering them a lot less um, and I can water them so there's a little bit of water sitting in the ground uh, pretty much all the time in the bottom of these trays and the moisture can wick up just using osmosis and the plants never really completely dry out you do have to be careful that you're not drowning your seedlings if you choose to use this method but for me it means I can water every second or third day rather than having to water daily which when you're super busy that's a really handy thing to know. You can of course use any kind of cups that you've got around even ice cream containers, yogurt bottles. Basically if you can put some dirt in it and you can poke some holes in the bottom to help with drainage then you can probably grow some seeds in it. The nice thing about the ones that are specifically made for seeds is they tend to be about the right size that you need to grow a little transplant that's about this big uh, maybe a little larger uh, before they go in the garden now one thing you may not know is any plant as soon as they their roots reach out and hit a wall of any type it will then limit how big that plant will eventually grow so ideally you would be potting these on before their roots get out to the edges of their containers and this is why using something called a soil block works really well because when the plants roots hit the air they naturally will air prune and it doesn't limit the size of the plant long term and then you can easily pot those up into larger containers or into larger blocks or you can see the roots poking out and go oh it's time to get them in the ground this is also why it's really good if you're going to be growing your seedlings in containers like this to plant them out at pretty much as soon as you can a smaller is often better as long as there's no risk of bad weather or the frost killing them off keeping them in seedling trays a little longer to avoid the bad weather and the shock of going from somewhere nice and gentle and calm for them to somewhere cold and blustery and horrible sometimes it's worth that risk of keeping them in the seedling tray a little longer but it's good to know that as soon as those plants get big enough to handle being planted out ideally you would get them out usually this is once they have their second set of true leaves when a seed first sprouts it pops up the I think they're called cotyledon I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it I'll put the word down here uh, you they put out these ones that were folded up within the seed and so they're the first leaves and they're not considered true leaves the true leaves are the next lot and the next lot and from there on that come out from there so you want to wait until the plant actually looks like the plant they're going to be and that's when it's time to get them into the soil the next thing you're going to need is some potting mix some seed studding mix some kind of dirt to put these plants in there's a huge range of different ones available if you can find a company that is testing for very routinely for any kind of persistent herbicides there have been quite a few instances of potting mix companies even even organic ones unfortunately getting their soils and their potting mixes and their seed starting mixes contaminated with some kind of persistent herbicide and unfortunately that means devastation for your seedlings and potentially for your entire garden I have found a company in New Zealand that uh, tests these really routinely it's called Dalton's they also make a range called Big Value so they've got a few options there they routinely check for persistent herbicide and so far I've not had any problems with them the main difference between a seed starting mix 
mix and a potting mix. Seed starting mix often have zero soil, um, they will often have no uh, manures in them, uh, they are often quite light and fluffy. They'll often have some kind of volcanic rock in there to help with aeration and to stop the plants getting too wet. Before I even start filling these seed trays, I usually give the potting mix a really good wet and I'll often add some uh, mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, I've got a powder that I add. This particular one is called Rutella. Ru Rutella? Um, and I add a couple of tablespoons of that and stir it all through. You want the soil to be nice and moist so that it holds together, but not so much that it's dripping when you squeeze it. Once the soil is nice and moist, then it's time to start filling your containers. All you'd need to do is fill them to the top and then make sure you firm them down. Because as you'll see, when you start firming them down, even just poking with your fingers, that some holes will poke down a lot further than others. And this is really important to give these a good poke so that you can find the air spaces. It helps you make sure you've got the same amount of soil into each of the containers which then means the plants all have an even amount of nutrients, they're going to get an even amount of water um, and you'll have a lot better germination and growth if they're all in the same amount and the same firmness of soil underneath them. Now instead of doing this one single hole at a time with your fingers you can either double up and do a couple of fingers at a time or do what I like to do and grab another tray that's exactly the same sit it on top, line up the holes and just push down. It's a really effective quick way of firming up a whole tray all at once. If you've got any major holes or gaps make sure you top those up and give them a light firm down as well. Now all you need to do is get some seeds. Now seeds come in a whole variety of types obviously, uh, different vegetables have different types and then you'll see there are hybrids, there are open pollinated, there are heirloom, Basically, if you're new to growing seeds, just grow whichever, unless you're particularly going to be saving seeds again at the end of the season, just pick whichever varieties look good to you. If you're wanting to save the seeds to grow them again, ideally you would get an heirloom or an open pollinated variety because these, will, these seeds will generally save true to type, which means the babies grown from the seeds will look the same and act the same as the parent plants. Hybrids are when they cross two different types of the same variety and they'll get uh, for a really specific type of trait um, but when you save the seeds they're not necessarily a stable hybrid uh, so some of the babies will have sort of grandparent genetics and they'll be a bit of a mishmash. They will still grow, they'll still grow fruit probably of the same um, similar to the parents but they won't be exactly the same. So I mean if you save seeds from a hybrid tomato you're still going to get edible tomatoes, they're not going to suddenly give you corn or something daft, uh, but they won't be necessarily exactly the same as the parent, but they might be something new and fantastic and you won't know unless you try. Usually the rule is with seeds to sow them up to twice the width of the seed deep in the soil, so tiny tiny little seeds you can just surface sprinkle them over the top. Um, and other small small seeds just cover them barely barely with any kind of soil. What I like to do is just make a wee divot in the top, place my seeds in. I usually do one to two seeds per hole uh, and then we can pinch out any that are struggling and it just, seeds are really cheap so it gives you a better chance of getting lots of plants. So you just pinch out the ones that don't look as strong, keep the strongest ones and then you can just give a really light dusting of soil over the top. And then all you have to do is give them a water. I like to fill up these bottom trays as well so I know that while I'm not looking at them they're not going to dry out. But while they're just germinating they're going to need top watering and they need to be kept nice and moist. If you want you can put a sheet of glass over the top or um, even some newspaper just to help keep that moisture in. You can buy specific domes to go over them but I don't use those and honestly if I just water them once or twice a day from the top until they have germinated I don't have any great problems. But once they have germinated they very quickly will send a taproot really far down to the bottom or at least part way down their tray and that's when you can start bottom watering them seriously. Now all these seedlings need is to be protected from the elements and to be given some warmth and some light and so they can get germinated. If you're worried about getting contaminated potting soil check out this recipe here how to make your own and I will see you in the next one.